Bless be the Lord. Happy New Year. Thanks so much for stopping by my channel. In this video, I want to talk about suffering. God wants people to be happy. As these words hit my ears earlier in 2021, something just didn't quite sit right with me. I couldn't yet put my finger on what it was at the time. It was still quite ignorant in my understanding of the faith but you know something just didn't quite feel right and so in the time that's passed since i've spent a lot of time poking at that statement doing a lot of research doing a lot of thinking contemplating praying trying to understand that statement and what was it that didn't quite feel right and i think i'm in a spot today to better talk about it this is definitely not a one video subject the concept of suffering and happiness, that's, that's a big topic and I'd say core to our Christian faith. But I wanted to at least scratch the surface with this first video. And so what, I came, what I've come to realize is that that statement didn't sit right with me because God wants people to be happy. That statement from that person was based on a contemporary, secular, consumeristic, materialistic perception of happiness. This idea that happiness is defined by having things, having possessions, money, having positions of authority and power, seeking sexual pleasure. These were the concepts that defined happiness for this person. And so when they said to me, God wants people to be happy, that's what felt wrong. Because that is not the happiness that God desires for us. I do believe that God seeks for us to be happy, but it's in the happiness of eternal union with God in the next life beyond our time here on earth. And so, I mean, suffering is a core part of the Christian life. It conforms us to Christ through suffering. We've got the intense, powerful account of Christ's passion and suffering that ultimately brought about our redemption. And when we face suffering in our life, it unites us to Christ and continues that process of redemption. Christ says such explicitly in the New Testament, looking at Matthew's Gospel, and he that taketh not up his cross and followeth me is not worthy of me. And I'm not picking that one out of context. There are countless examples where we could pick very similar words where Christ is saying, you're going to face suffering, you're going to be hated by the world, but you must pick up your cross and follow me if you seek union with me and you seek eternal life. Countless examples. And we're going to face suffering. That's a hard truth to face, especially in today's world. But it's not suffering for suffering's sake. And I've recently come across an article from somebody that I follow on Gab named Roosh V, who's an Orthodox Christian, but he summed it up pretty well in an article he wrote called You Must Suffer, and I want to share that with you now. One of the most difficult topics concerning Christianity is suffering. Lord Jesus Christ called us to pick up and carry our cross while not being of the world, but how much suffering is too much? Should we attempt to alleviate our suffering or embrace it? From my short two-year walk with Christ, I have noticed that experiencing any kind of suffering seems to increase my faith rather than decrease it. Therefore, I must conclude that suffering is a gift from God to preserve our salvation. The first gotcha question that atheists usually demand of believers is, why does God allow suffering? Their hearts are too hard to understand the answer. Because he loves us. Without suffering, we would remain attached to the fallen world and its false idols, never turning away from the neon lights and sensual music to work on our salvation. Because it's only in pain do we start contemplating the big questions of our existence. In the Orthodox Church, one saint has taught that illnesses like cancer which kill you slowly are a gift from God. It removes a person from the world and gives them ample time to serve God in a way that they didn't before the illness. This explanation does not satisfy the atheist, agnostic, or lukewarm Christian because they believe the point of this temporal life is to experience pleasure and happiness. 
Anything that conflicts with that notion will be rejected. They will turn away from you in anger and seek the comfort and benefits that Satan promises them in the here and now, and eventually subject their bodies to all manner of medical tortures to enjoy their one life. Even devout Christians require suffering to maintain their faith because they can easily be tempted and deceived by the evil one upon moments of worldly luck or strength. May I be so bold to say that they need constant suffering, at least at a low level because a prolonged period of material benefits without health or money problems, for example, will have a corroding effect on their faith. In many Orthodox monasteries, the monks store and view skulls of dead monks to remind them of death. For us, we need to be inflicted with continual pain, or else we will forget that one day we too will die. Since my early twenties, I have had heart palpitations. Many nights I have awoken in terror to a thumping chest. In the past few years, the problem has gotten worse, to the point where it's a daily presence in my life. Like most others with this issue, cardiologists have said they could find nothing wrong with the workings of my heart. I have tried various natural supplements and diet changes, and while they have allowed me to manage the problem, causing mostly mental affliction than physical, the sensitivity of, of my heart and the feeling of its struggle to maintain a normal rhythm is a constant reminder that I will certainly die well before I desire, that I am closer to death than I would like to be, and the only reason my heart continues to beat is that God allows it. I am sure there are pharmaceutical medications that can alleviate this problem, but I will not take them, and I also have not prayed to God to remove this affliction entirely, but to allow me to endure it, and to help me only if it is His will, because I know that if my heart palpitations disappear along with all my other minor problems, God in His mercy will have to give me another affliction to remind me of my true calling to serve Him in this life, not merely maintain perfect health so that I could enjoy the fallen world. He knows that if I did not have any bodily afflictions that remind me of death, I would slowly backslide into a being a man of this world and a child of Satan. As I'm sure you've noticed in your life, as soon as you solve one major problem, it doesn't take long for another problem to surface. God gives you a cross that is well suited for you, but I imagine he will take it away if you truly can't bear it. He will let you rest and then give you a new cross, because he knows you need a cross. We all need a cross. He sent His only Son in the flesh to teach you about this reality, and as Christians we must bear whatever cross He gives us if we care about our salvation. The elderly suffer from health maladies not, because, not only because their body is degrading, but because God is trying to prepare them for the next life. The pharmaceutical commercials may show geriatrics having an active lifestyle, or actors smiling from ear to ear while playing tennis, but instead of popping dozens of pills a day in a vain attempt to extend life or minimize pain, what they really need to do is beg God to forgive them for their sins and prepare them to serve by His right hand in paradise. You will not win at this life. Instead, you will die before you believe it's time. It's when you fight this truth that you really suffer, not only now, but in the life to come. So, very good article. I like that he talks about the common argument points from atheists, agnostics, lukewarm Christians to the concept of suffering, rebutes them, and provides very practical examples that I think many of us could relate to. Essential to surviving and thriving as a Christian in today's world, that there will be more videos to come on this topic. But I did want to share two other resources where I've come across great discussions on suffering. And the first is, I've recently started learning about St. Stanislaus Pipczynski from 1600s in Poland. He's the founder of the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. He's a great story himself, great teachings, great thinker, good rhetoric, and also some powerful intercessions that led to his becoming a saint in pretty recent times. But in his work, in Specta Cordis, he has a discussion about suffering leads to glory that I wanted to share. Consider that Christ's humanity truly acquired omnipotence and obtained power over all creation after he was lifted up on the cross and put to death by unspeakable torments. Similarly, the Most Blessed Virgin was named the Queen of Heaven after the resurrection of her Son. Nevertheless, she was not adorned with this title by the Heavenly Envoy when he promised her a pure maternity, revealing only the fullness of grace. Undoubtedly, it seems that she obtained the scepter of the Heavenly Kingdom through the pains she endured through the Passion of Christ the Lord. Hence you may learn, 
The heavier are the crosses that you endure on earth, the greater shall be the rewards that await you in heaven. Indeed, we are led to the heavenly kingdom through afflictions. And then lastly, from another Polish saint, St. Faustina in her diary, where she's from the 1900s in Poland and has a tremendous story where she was the secretary of divine mercy to bring the concept of divine mercy to the world. And that's really what the diary does. It recounts her interactions with Jesus as she learned about divine mercy. And she suffered many afflictions and really came to understand this idea of suffering. And because she has only a very short and elementary education, it's very understandable, but you can sense the divinity in the words with how closely she's united with God. It's just amazing that somebody with such a low education could put together such beautiful words. And so from her work in the, in the diary, a couple of selections on suffering. One interaction with Jesus, my child, you please me most by suffering, in your physical as well as your mental sufferings. My daughter, do not seek sympathy from creatures. I want the fragrance of your suffering to be pure and unadulterated. I want you to detach yourself not only from creatures, but also from yourself. My daughter, I want to delight in the love of your heart, a pure love, virginal, unblemished, untarnished. The more you will come to love suffering, my daughter, the purer your love for me will be. She says, from the moment I came to love suffering, it ceased to be a suffering for me. Suffering is the daily food of my soul. And then just one more selection from her diary. Once when I was suffering greatly, I left my work and escaped to Jesus and asked him to give me his strength. After a very short prayer, I returned to my work, filled with enthusiasm and joy. Then one of the sisters, probably Sister Justine, said to me, You must have many consolations today. Sister, you look so radiant. Surely God is giving you no suffering but only consolations. You are greatly mistaken, Sister, I answered, for it is precisely when I suffer much that my joy is greater, and when I suffer less, my joy is also less. However, that soul was letting me recognize that she does not understand what I was saying. I tried to explain to her that when we suffer much, we have a great chance to show God that we love him. But when we suffer little, we have less occasion to show God our love. And when we do not suffer at all, our love is then neither great nor pure. By the grace of God, we can attain a point where suffering will become a delight to us, for love can work such things in pure souls. Take that back, think about that, pray about that, contemplate the concept of suffering and the power of redemptive suffering. It's a heavy concept to grasp and something so counter to the world as we know it today, especially in the materialistic West. It's, you know, we're taught to run as far as and fast away from suffering as possible. And certainly I'm not advocating to go out and inflict suffering upon yourself, but when suffering falls upon you, or if there are those suffering around you, you can pray to God for the strength to endure the suffering, not necessarily pray for the suffering to go away, but the strength to endure the suffering and to grow, cl grow closer to God, or there are opportunities for us to help take on the sufferings of those entrusted to us, those that we interact with who have not yet internalized this concept of suffering, and we can help them to bear their cross because it can be a heavy load and sometimes people just need a hand to help to carry their cross. First video about this topic, I think there will probably be more because it's such a deep and rich topic, but that concludes this first discussion on suffering. Thanks so much for stopping by my channel. I hope that you have a great day and God bless you. Bye-bye.